Hi, I'm Julie and I work with Accomplished Quilting in Sales and Education. Today we're going to set up an edge to edge in Mach 3 with Autopilot. We've loaded our quilt backing and our quilt top and we're ready to baste our batting onto the backing. I'm going to change my stitch length to three stitches per inch, press enter, and then I will turn on the channel lock and I'm ready to start basting. Now we can bring the quilt top up. I'm matching up the edge of the quilt top with my reference line of stitching. The center of my leader is here, so I need to adjust my top a little bit. turned off my channel lock. I'll put a few pins in. Then I'll go ahead and baste. Once I get to this edge, I pause and adjust the tension on my quilt. It's time for us to set up the edge to edge. The grid on our screen represents how big our quilt is. So I need to change the grid size to match up with our quilt. Under settings in the top command bar, select quilt size. Our quilt is 77 inches by 62 and a half inches. When I hit accept, it will resize it. And now my grid is 77 by 62.5. You may notice we don't have a sew zone yet. You can plan out your quilt without the sew zone. We'll do that in a little while, but right now we're going to get bring out a pattern. I'm opening up my pattern pad, and I've already chosen this pattern, Surf B2B. I'm going to click on it, drag it in, and it opens up in the transform tool. If I want to size it, I'm welcome to do that right now. The pattern is 10 inches tall. I know that if I do the patterns about 10 inches, I can fit two rows in. So I'm going to resize it. Right now it's 9.2 inches. If I go over here to the resize section of transform, I'll just type in 10, enter, and then it'll automatically resize the width and the height. Let's go ahead now and put in our sew zone. Sew zone tool is down here at the bottom. It's part of your sew tools. 
When I click on that, it'll ask me to, sh to show the machine where the right rear corner of the sew zone should be. Let's go look at our quilt top. It's easy to put your sew zone in with Mach 3, but you need to go to your Mach 3 screen. And I press accept. Notice that my sew zone is going to be much bigger than my actual quilt. So I have this as far off to the right as possible and also as far back as possible, but you don't want it necessarily bumping into this pickup bar, so I bring it forward just a tiny bit. Press accept and the computer gives me the next prompt. Now move the machine to the front left corner of the sew zone. And I'm going to do the same thing and go off the edge of the quilt top as far as I can to the front and then back off a little bit, press accept. If you look at this screen, my sew zone is much bigger than my grid and my pattern definitely fits in the sew zone. If I want to see how big the pattern is going to look on my quilt, I can easily use this tool called Actual Size. And that will be the density of the quilt quilting on my actual quilt. You notice that the grid now has one inch squares. If you do zoom in, the grid turns to quarter inch squares. If you go back to full view, it shows my entire project. We're ready to use our edge to edge tool now. So I will select the edge to edge tool. Most of the time I use the trim feature to set up the edge to edge because I know that if I have um, any offset to the patterns, it's going to trim them off at the end. And if there's extra patterns at the bottom, it'll trim off the bottom also. Clip Connect should be selected so that any trimming doesn't have lots of starts and stops. And then before I generate the edge to edge, I can select that my edge to edge is a little bigger than my actual quilt. None of our quilts are perfect, so I always add a couple inches. So I'm going to add three inches here. So instead of 77, it'll be 80. And I could also add a little extra to the bottom. I'm going to make that 64. Now I'm ready to generate the edge to edge. There it is. And it looks good. So I can save it and start quilting. But if I did want the spacing to be different, all that's necessary is to click on a row and slightly nudge it in any direction, drop it, and it will resize all the rows and all the spacing. If you don't like what you created, you can always cancel, or you can make changes in here if you wanted to make it bigger or change the offset and then update. But I'm going to go ahead and accept. Once I've accepted this, then I can go into other tools and I can start looking at the grid and matching it up with my quilt. One thing I noticed right off the bat here is that my patterns are a little bit above the sew zone. So I'll probably do a little trimming before we stitch it out. But before I do trimming, I always like to save. It's important to save early and often. And we're going to go in here and say save project as, give it a name. And now we have a project called number one. Before I put any stitches into the quilt, I will verify that my pattern on the grid is enough to cover all of my quilt top. And I can see here by my crosshairs that there's a little extra pattern. I'm also making sure that all the patterns inside the sew zone because otherwise it won't stitch out. So now I have my quilt head here at the top. 
And since some of it's outside the sew zone, I'm going to have to do a little trimming. Or in this case, I'm just going to move my quilt just a tiny bit. Before I do any trimming, I'm going to check the right side of the quilt top. It looks like I have plenty of pattern on the right side of the crosshairs. So the only trimming I have to do is up here on the top. I usually put the machine in the center of the quilt because if I do a trim, it's going to be a straight line across. Then I'll go into the trimming tool I'm using the sewing head to do my trim, so I have to change it from input from the mouse to input to the, with the sewing head. We're going to trim the entire quilt along the top edge. We're doing a horizontal trim. And when I click on the grid, it's going to it use the sew head to make the trim. If I move the sew head, it changes the trim. So I've actually put the sew head along the top edge of this grid, and that's where I'm going to do my trim. If I did not want the trim to be on the top, but I want it on the other side, I can always click on invert, and it will make the opposite side highlighted orange. I do want to trim this orange part, so I'm ready to invert and then accept. And it looks like we're ready to stitch. To stitch it out, I will look at what can fit into the sew zone. And if it's possible, I like to group a couple rows together. Oops. First row, link it to the second row. And my third row comes outside of the sew zone, so we won't link that one. I'll accept, and then when I, I'm ready to stitch out, since we've done some trimming, I'm also gonna do control save, make sure that I keep saving often, and then go, and everything that is in the sew zone will get transferred to the controller. It's normal to see this, one or more cued patterns are outside the sewing zone. It's referring to all of the ones down here. Do you want to DQ and proceed? Yes. Now all the ones that are, didn't fit in the sew zone were turned light pink. That means they're DQ'd and they're out of line. What's happening right now is the patterns are being transferred to the controller. machine pause to allow us to cut thread. We don't have to do that right now, but we do want to touch continue to start sewing and it's moving to the green square. That's the start of our first row. I'll press the pickup to bring up my bottom thread. I'm going to press the pickup a few more times to secure my thread and then press continue to go. Sewing of our first pass is complete and we'll click OK and that will be DQ'd and now we're ready to roll our quilt. Thanks for watching this video about setting up an edge to edge with autopilot. Mach 3. 
Um, if you'd like more information, please call us at 866-556-2552 or visit us online at www.accomplishedquilting.com. Yeah.